In most jobs, people are really just using their brains. And in cuddle therapy, I'm using my body. Oh, laughing is good. I know it is. Yeah. This is a service for human beings. We are using our bodies to hold other people's bodies. Good night. <laughs> I'm Saskia Larson, and I'm a professional cuddler. I prepare my space uh, for each client um, so that we have like enough room to cuddle. And then I take a big sheet and I cover the entire couch and that's it. And then I hop on. Ta-da! <laughs> a professional cuddler is someone who helps people who are touch deprived by simply holding them. So if I help somebody feel better and more connected, they might go home to their family and be more connected. My clients range in age and backgrounds. I have clients with a Hasidic background who don't get much touch in their community. Unfortunately, most of my female clients are sexual abuse victims, and I've had situations where touch doesn't happen at all during a, a cuddle session. They are just allowed to say they don't want touch. Then I have elderly clients who live alone, maybe don't have family around that aren't getting enough touch. Hey, come on Hi. in. How are you? Good, how you doing? Want a hug? Yeah. Okay. Always. Mm. Thank you. All right. Shall I go change? Yeah, go ahead and change. And I'll see you in a minute. A few things that I do to maintain the non-sexual or platonic nature of the session is I always have the sessions in my home. I don't cuddle on a bed. For me, the bed carries too much sexual energy, so I do cuddle sessions on my couch. I don't allow people to cuddle with me in their street clothes, because I just think that's gross. And people have to wear an appropriate cuddle outfit. How's your day so far? Oh, it's really good now that I'm here. <laughs> I really needed to come. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. So when I interview new clients on the phone, I talk to them about arousal immediately. And that's just because sexuality and touch are so tangled. So I just tell them, you know, if arousal happens for them, don't shame themselves, thank your body for being healthy, and don't act on it. And my definition of acting on it would be doing anything that increases arousal or even doing anything that maintains arousal. I put so many like boundaries in there, it's like a safe place to function within. And at no point does anybody think that this is going to become sexual. Oh, it already is working. <laughs> Can we lay down now? Sure. Do you want me to put my arm under your neck? Oh, I like it like this. Like that, okay. Mm -hmm. Great, I'm gonna put my, we're gonna do pretzel legs, okay? Mm -hmm. Yay. Good to see you. <laughs> this is fun. Cuddle therapy to me is a dream job. So we go, this is all the states where we have cuddlists. When I first found out that I could do cuddling as a job and make money, I was like, yes, are you kidding me? $80 an hour to cuddle? Basically, there's a profile for each of the cuddlists on cuddlist.com. I think what makes a good profile is just friendly, neutral pictures of the cuddlist. For me, it was like walking into a candy store because I'm just an extremely affectionate person. Mm, thank you. You're welcome. I think the reason that I get some inner soul satisfaction from doing cuddle therapy is just because it's really helping people. And it's so simple. I kind of wish prostitution was legal and safe so that it could be more clear and people looking for that could also not feel shame and just go and have that. But people who are really actually looking for platonic nurturing touch could find it more easily. And we go, and then we're gonna eye gaze and just look at each other. This one is my favorite. <laughs> It just gives me so much love. Yay. Mm. The right eye is the right mm. eye. <laughs> so I have two main sources of income right now. One is massage therapy and one is cuddle therapy. And I, it's about 50-50 at this point. 
Massage therapy can be physically exhausting and I have to limit the amount I can do. Cuddle therapy, there's almost no limit. I can do up to seven hours a day and feel fine. Gushy, gushy. Gushy, gushy. Mm -hmm. I have a boyfriend and he's awesome because he understands what I do and why I do it. So we don't have to deal with jealousy. When I'm doing cuddle therapy, even though it's there's a closeness there and there's an intimacy there and I have love for my clients, it's not the same energy at all as me being held by my boyfriend. When I first became a cuddle therapist, I was kind of like shy about talking about it. So I would actually introduce it by saying, you're gonna think this is weird. Now I don't do that at all. Now I just say, oh, I, you know, I'm a cuddle therapist and I continue the sentence by saying, I provide touch for touch deprived people. And people are like, oh, cool. It's amazing, like the difference in reaction, how I feel about it and how people perceive it. There's a paranoia about touch in our society, and I think it would be so much better if people could get touch without necessarily being villainized for coming on to somebody. I think touch is important because we're human beings and it's in our DNA to need connection with other human beings. And without connection to other human beings, we just don't thrive. <laughs>